But somebody now went, maybe some people are trying to intimidate you in your family. Say Bible, 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 church, 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 church. So because of that, you are you are you change your bag. Then you now go and buy a big bag or you go, you go and buy a basket. So that they don't know that it's a Bible, so you put it on your head as if you are going to sell something. But you're like, you are living in prison. You are living in prison. And why are you living in prison? Because you are living in accordance to their notion and perspective. You can't get to where God is taking you. Some people will hate you. There's no doubt. It's a fact. There's no doubt about that. Some people will talk bad of you. It's a fact. Some people will even go extra mind to paint you bad. That's the fact. But what was the truth that God said about you before creation? He said, you are going to be great. Uh, Malachi, I mean Mikai, agreed that he fell. You see, one of our problems is this. It's just like someone that is working in a muddy place. Have you seen a muddy place before? And you fell. And people are watching you from far distance. They want to quickly rise up so that they don't see you that you, you fell. You keep on to fall. Because it's a muddy ground. But I want to pretend to them. I don't want them to see that I, I fell. Ah, let me, let me, let me, you fall again. Let me, you fall again. Let me. But when you, when you are, when you now accepted that, okay, I fell, no problem. Mika said, this is a fact, my brother. Look, look at me, I fell. So there is nothing about it. Everybody has seen it. They rejoice not over me because I fall. If I fall, I will rise. So you live your life by what people say. You have a lot and a lot and a lot of problems. You put yourself in danger. Some people, because they wanted to live their life by what people say, they are behind the bar now. Don't do the prison. You jail them. Oh, I don't have it now. That does not mean that you will never have it tomorrow, forever. That request you have placed before me, I wish I can do it for you now, but the means is not available. That does not mean you cannot still do it when the time comes. So now, you have to start to differentiate about, from the facts and the truth. And you have to speak the truth all the time. That was why Jesus Christ became so different, excellent, everything. They set eyes on him. They said, This man was he not a friend to Lazarus? Didn't you know that Lazarus will die? But he has been coming to their family, he has been eating there. But the man is dead now for the past four days. That was the fact. But the truth was that Jesus Christ said, Lazarus, come out. I don't know where they have, they have, they have done some certain thing against him. And they believe that you will remain like that. It's a lie. The truth said, Come out from the prison. So that is where freedom lies. That's if you see some people, they are always happy, calm, cool. They've discovered something. Hallelujah. Now, for example, I, for an example, no matter what you have, whether you have 50 houses, 100 houses, I, never, I can never end. 
Because that the fact is that God has blessed you to build those houses. But the truth told me that I'm going to have three jets. So I focus on the truth. So I don't need the, your house. That's a fact. You have built it. So the day I'm going to buy three jets, it will build more than that. Trip. Okay, maybe you have, you, have, you, have got, you have got married for some time. Five years, six years. Babies are not coming. And all your colleagues are bringing forth, bringing forth every year. Naturally, you get sad. It's normal as a human being. That's why I said many of us gain our freedom physically, but mind and spiritual, we have not gained freedom in our mind and in the spirit realm. The day you gain your freedom in the spirit realm and in your mind, that's the day you conquer life. Even if some people are planning to kill you, fact is that they wanted to kill you. But let me finish the one about the issue of the fruit of the womb. But the truth said, I was reading about a woman who had 46 or 40 something children in Kenya. I don't know how many of you have read about it last week. If you have read about it, just wave your hand. How many? 40 something. Eh? 40 something children. And the woman had, the first one she had, uh, Triplet, triplet, also quadruplet. The next, the, the third one that we call Paul, another quadruplet again. So the next one also triplet. There was a time he had six at the go. <laughs> so the interview her, I watched it, I saw her. That you don't have any problem. He said, No, 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 so I'm okay. How come you have you are so fertile like this? He said, Well, she had a story that even her great grandmother had it like, like that. The gene was there. But maybe when she got married, one year, two years, three years, her husband kept on pestering her, I'll send you out. Because you didn't bring forth. That's the fact. But the truth said she's going to have 46 children. She had it. And all the children surrounded her. I wonder how she can cope with the 46 children. And I said, well, may, may the Lord bless the husband of this woman. <laughs> I wonder. So, so my thinking was that how much would they be spending in a day? And I said, man, the government must come to the aid of these people. How can they raise those children? Because parenting is not a, it's a, it's not a child's play. An analyst said in Britain, said, he came out with something, said, if you have one child and you train that child up to a BSc level, you have spent $250,000 in your life. From day one to BSC. $250,000. Do you have it now? But you are having children. Where did the money come from? Those children, who raised them? Who brought the money? God, the Almighty. But the fact was that the salary you are earning. Well, if you calculate it, you don't know how it, So which one will you take? The fact or the truth? That's why Jesus Christ said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You are free this morning. Yeah. You are told me your amen over there. Yeah. So there are some certain things 
in the Bible that some people fail to interpret them correctly to us. Because well, somebody believe that, okay, the, the passage is only talking about someone that is demonized. Somebody that is possessed. So he, 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 need, he or she needed to be free. No. You can be in bondage and no demon is harassing you. As long as your mind and your spirit is not free. The day your mind is free, the day your spirit is free, then you don't have problem. You are a free person. But if your body is free, physically, but your mind and your spirit are not free, you are in prison. I don't know whether you are getting this analogy. That's why no matter what is happening, I, I thank God for one consolation. If I'm going to bed, I just wrap everything, I put them in the a, in a, in a, in a, in a garbage. And I sleep off. I have a way I talk to myself I don't worry myself with the things of life when I'm on my bed. I zero my mind completely about the things of life. So it doesn't take me more than 10 minutes. Maybe I'm cruising in a... <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, you get what I'm saying? Once I'm on my bed, I want to sleep. Even, even in the afternoon at times, I want to sleep. I just zero my mind off everything about the world. And once I zero my mind up off everything about the world, I sleep off. I'm free. Because I did not put anything there. I did not carry anything to my head. Because if you put it on in, in, in your mind, you'll not be able to sleep. You'll just be rolling. It will keep on coming. I want about the mind it keeps us to enlarge, bring all kinds of ideas. But once you zero it, you lock it and close the door, you sleep. Praise God. Praise God. Somebody excited this morning. Now you ask yourself whether you are free. Many of us will now agree that we are not free. At the time you see your colleagues, it's good to aspire. Maybe your colleagues are going higher. Good to aspire. I want to go higher. But that does not mean you should get yourself disturbed to a level that you start to worry yourself. Because what the truth about you is that maybe in the next 24 months, you are going to be more than that to your colleagues 10 times. Because the person controlling the future is your maker. That's why Jesus, look at what Paul said. In Colossians 1, apart from 14, that he said he came to redeem you through his blood. In verse 16, he started saying, he said, For by him were all things created. Every manufacturer knows his products. Am I making sense to somebody? He created you. So Paul, Paul said, But by him were all things created, visible or invisible, throne or dominion, principalities and powers. They were created by him and for him and in him all things consist and is before all things it is before all things when you are when you synchronize yourself with somebody that is before all things he will keep on to help you 
The fact that somebody said, okay, I will, I will help you. He may be hindered from helping you. But if God says, I will help you, in Isaiah 41, from verse 10, he said, I will help you. And I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. That's what, what the Lord said. You don't know God. That's the problem. Once you know him, you keep calm. Because you are free. But what brings agitation? What brings, makes some people to be fidgeting? Because you are not free. You are not free from your mind. You are not free in the spirit realm. Praise God. Am I communicating to somebody? The day you are free from these two places, you are, you are on top of the world. That's why Jesus Christ used the word in John 2 verse 24. He said, and Jesus knew all men and he did not commit himself to anybody. Jesus did not owe anybody. Jesus did not hand the money before. So that somebody would not say, okay, ah, I gave him money and he held it. Jesus did not buy land. Why is that he did not buy land? What did he need land for? He's the creator of the whole universe. What did he need money for? He is the one who created it. He did not need a woman. He made everybody. He made man and he made the woman out of, out of man. So he did not need all those things. Praise God. That's why you cannot say this is the address of Jesus' house. That's why you cannot say this is where Jesus was living. That's why you cannot say this is the land that Jesus bought. <laughs> he knew the truth that is not for this place. And that truth is in him. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The truth is that I just came to help you and I'll go back to where I am all. And that's why in John 14, verse 1, he said, in my father's house, there are many mansions there. <laughs> so what did he need a house? When he's just coming here for a short time to help you to fix what is wrong and he's going back. Let's assume I'm, I'm an expatriate. And I'm, 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 I'm being hired to preach to you here in this church. Automatically, I'll go back home. Because I'm an expatriate. When, do you, when last did you hear that an ambassador of a nation that is being posted to that nation now disown his own country and say, I'm going to stay here? <laughs> the fact is that he's an ambassador for that time. But the truth is that he will still go back to where they sent him from. Are you getting the difference between the fact and the truth now? Praise God. If you tell some ladies, okay, that man will be a good husband for you. Oh, the way she will scream. This one? This one? No, 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 no. You know why she was saying this one? This one? Number one, she, the man did not have car. The man did not have a job. The man is still living under his father's roof. And the lady who look at the man from head to toe, this one, can he buy my bag? The fact that you saw him at that particular time, you don't know what tomorrow have. That's why somebody sang the song, said nobody knows what tomorrow will be. That is where so many women have missed their real husband. And the one they got now is just a matchmaking of counterfeit husband. Or management husband. Just manage. 
or the man who says, let me just manage her. I've shared with you a woman who was a GM and one day she wept and went to her pastor's office and she was a GM in a bank. Before I round up, before we start to worship, praise God. And that Sunday morning she just came and she started crying. Now our pastor said, what happened? Did anybody hurt you? She just start, kept on crying. Then the next is a pastor. Will you be looking at me like this? Can't you see my age? See my position? I'm a GM in a bank. I don't have a child. I don't have a husband. Oh, pastor says, is that why you are crying? To an extent that you are so, you are in a state of dissolution. Okay, let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. Cool down. Just take it cool. Take it cool. You know, when at times <laughs> the pastors, well, a, a good pastor is telling you something, somebody say, ah, this one is not. Uh... But the fake one, they will start to do a black and dab. You know, they say, ah, I've seen a vision that it's your mother, it's your father, it's your this. Oh, now they want to kill you. That's. A good pastor, let us pray. And you know, the next thing the pastor said, God told me now, now, now that I held your hand, that if you go out now, now, you will meet your husband. And the woman was so elated. Are you with me now? So she quickly jumped out of the, of the, of the chair in front of the pastor, opened the door of the pastor. The first man she met was the security man of the church. She ran back against the pastor. No, 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 no. The man I met, praise God. The man I met cannot be my wife. Pastor said, God, as, as long as God has spoken, you met the first man. That's your husband. He said, ah. But the pastor said, you are also a GM. He said, the, the man is a GM. He said, get man. Praise God. Then our, our weeping increased. You know women, when they are, then she reversed. <laughs> the pastor said, God has spoken. The Alpha and the Omega has spoken it is well with you so the woman sat down there she was thinking of so many things and the pastor said God did not kill you he only gave you husband Assuming God now said, tomorrow you are no more. What do you need husband for? What are you going to do? So she now adjusted herself and said, okay. Okay, pastor. That man is my husband. Can they call him? So they call the GM also. It's also a gate man. pastor said the Lord said this woman is interested in you the Lord said this is your wife the man stood there speechless the woman summoned courage drew her to her side and tapped I mean drew him to her side and tapped him the man has never gone to university started courtship, the woman said, go and pick your phone, go to university, I'll pay. How many years for university? Three years, four years, the man had his BSc. The man finished, the woman said, you need to get your master's. 
man was brilliant. Within one month, he had his masters. The wife, GM, had masters. When the man came back, he had his masters. The university the man attended offered the man another scholarship to do his, proof, uh, his PhD. Before they said John, the man was ordained, was honored as a professor. Now, before, before, before I rest my case, the fact remained that the man was what? Eh? Eh? I can't hear you. God bless you. It is well with you. I'm so sorry. Rise up and give the Lord a mighty clap offering. Are you clapping for Jesus? Or? Are you sure you are clapping for Jesus? 